In this video we're going to look at how to add a quiz to Moodle 4.0 and that's quite simple to do. First we go up to edit mode, make sure you're in your course, go up to edit mode, select add an activity or resource and the one we're looking for is a quiz so you can type in the word quiz to find it or you can also select activities and look for quiz down the bottom left in this case and click on quiz. Here is our new quiz. We're going to type in a name for the quiz. Uh, in this case, this is our task one, check your knowledge quiz. That's the quiz we're creating. Task one, check your knowledge quiz. At the moment, we won't have a description in there. We can just leave that blank, uh, but we will add a description later. So the settings for a new quiz are relatively simple. Obviously the first one is timing and that is where you can decide when the quiz is made available, if it's enabled or not. It decides whether that date that you put in there actually allows the quiz to be open on a certain date and then you can have it close on a certain date. And that works for your quiz in a course. Uh, that's the easiest way to set up the quizzes. There is a way to manage them in groups as well which we won't look at right at the moment but open the quiz, close the quiz. You can also set a time limit from when they start the quiz and the description in there actually tells you if enabled the time limit is st stated on the initial quiz page and a countdown timer displayed in the quiz navigation block. So that's over on the right when they start the quiz it will tell them how long they've got left to complete the quiz. And when the time expires this is where you get to decide what actually happens. A grace period um, but no more questions answered or attempts must be submitted before the time expires or they're not counted. So they have to get right through the complete submission part at the end as well. Okay, for the grade, uh, you can have grade categories. We haven't got any set up at the moment. We have a grade to pass. In our case, our grade to pass will actually be five out of 10. Uh, our quiz is gonna be out of 10, so we're just gonna go with five is the grade to pass. Attempts allowed, we're going to leave that as unlimited at the moment, but you can change that obviously to one or two attempts grading method based on the different attempts. In our case, we're going to leave it as highest grade. So the highest grade is the best mark that they get out of their unlimited attempts. So yes, they could keep doing it over and over and over until they get 100% until they pass. Obviously, you need to decide what works in your scenario. Let's go to layout. Layout is quite simple. It's talking about uh, when the questions are being answered, whether you put uh, you group them as every question is on its own page or whether you group them in groups of every two questions on a page. Uh, you can change that manually once you're editing the questions, which makes it easier. And then the navigation method where it says free, this is talking about whether students can jump between questions from question one to 10 to three to seven to four or around all the questions. So that's free navigation, or you can force them to have sequential where they have to go next, 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 or back, 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 to go forwards and backwards through the questions. Uh, obviously, if your questions are actually sequ sequential, meaning they need to answer one lot of questions first before they go to the next one, because it makes logical sense, because the questions might use information in the previous question, then you want to turn off free navigation. Question behavior. And this is a default, you can set this in individual questions as well, but you can actually have them all shuffled in different orders. So every time they do a new attempt, it reorders or reshuffles all the questions into a different order. The next one, how questions behave, these actually need a lot of explanation. So we might just go into the description here because it will make it easier. Okay, students can interact with the questions in the quiz in different ways. For example, you may wish the student to enter an answer to each question. Submit the entire quiz before anything's graded. That would be deferred feedback mode. Oops. So deferred feedback means they don't get any information about their answers, whether they're right or wrong, or any uh, additional information about them as they go. If you have that turned off, you're not using deferred feedback, so we're using one of the other options, then they can actually get the feedback after every individual question which in some cases might be more useful to your students to know how they're progressing rather than submit the whole lot in one go and then find out all the things I did wrong and what the answers or what the suggested comments and remarks are that go with them. The best option for you to do here, because it will actually take me a long time to explain them all, is to go to more help in this one and that will explain all the other different 
modes that you have for question behavior. They're very clever, so I definitely have a look at that. And then the final one, each attempt builds on the last, and a lot of people ask about this. If there's multiple attempts for a quiz, if you have this enabled and you have multiple attempts, then if the students already answered those questions, it can continue on from there. They don't have to re go and enter and recomplete the ones they've already done. So that's why it's calling attempts build on the last. If you have that as yes, instead of it being a whole new quiz, they can continue on. It's very clever, really useful. Review options, this is where it gets a little bit crazy. There are so many options in each of the questions of things that um, can be displayed and can be shown. By default, pretty much everything is ticked. During the attempt, because we've got deferred feedback selected up here, during the attempt, all of that's disabled. So they don't actually, although it's ticked here, so there is an override, during the attempt, they don't, they don't get any marks or any feedback or anything at all because we've got deferred feedback on. But immediately after they finish the attempt, then they get to see whether they got it correct, what the mark is that they got, if there's any feedback for that particular question or any general feedback for, uh, sorry, specific feedback for any of the actual questions they chose or general feedback for the overall question, all of that will appear. They can also be, also be shown the right answer and any overall feedback. Why would you want to know all of this? And why would you want to have these options is quite simple. There are cases where you don't want the student to know what the right answer is. You just want them to know they got it wrong and they need to go back and rethink what their answer is and have another go at it without being told the right answer. So you can turn that off. That's quite simple. Just turn right answer off from all the options and they won't need to see that anymore. There's also cases where you may not want the overall feedback or any of the feedback to show. You might just might want that to, to be left and not displayed as well, in which case you probably didn't need to enter any of that. You may also not want them to know the actual marks they got for some reason, so that can be disabled there as well. So that's the very basic rundown of the review options. The next one is appearance. Now this one, you can show the person's image just so that they know, and anyone who's supervising knows that that is the person who is actually logged in and the picture of that person based on their profile. Um, this can be useful if you're you know, using a, a process that screen captures the student doing the quiz at the same time, just to help verify that they are actually on the right profile and that they all match. Decimal places in the grade, that's up to you whether you need them or you don't. Grades are adjusted, there may need to be decimal places in there. Uh, often people turn that back to zero. And decimal places in the question grade, uh, you can set that to same as this one, or you can have it separate for individual questions. It's up to you. And the last one is to show blocks during quiz attempts. You can, uh, by default, that's turned off. Showing blocks just means that there's all those other blocks uh, that may be part of the course appearing on the other side. You can disable those just so that people don't have to look at them because it can become really annoying having too much stuff on the screen when you're trying to do a quiz. A safe exam browser. There is a specific special browser that's designed for safe exams, and that means that the student opens it up, they start the exam, and it will trigger, and it will know when they leave that browser to go to another browser or to go to another program. Uh, so if they if they click on anything outside of the Safe Exam browser, it will register in the system that they've done that and stop the exam straight away. So they do have to download and install the Safe Exam browser to use that. So that's only going to work for students that that's appropriate for. Have experiment with that first before you go and start using it. Uh, extra restrictions on attempts. So this is where there's restrictions that you're forcing to uh, make it more secure for people to use. So you can have a password there that says, you know, if you'd like to do this quiz, you need to put in this particular password. You can restrict it to certain people on a certain network. If they're not on that network, then they can't access that particular quiz. Delay between attempts so that they can't just do attempt after attempt after attempt without spending some time researching and finding out what they should know. So you can actually put a delay between that, especially between first and second. Browser security is one I actually haven't read before. If full screen pop up with some JavaScript security selected, the quiz learning staff student has a Java enabled browser. Quiz appears in a full screen pop up window, covers all the other windows and has no navigation. Students prevent as far as possible from using facilities like copy and paste. Okay, so it does a pop up that tries to check what's going on. It's not 100% 
foolproof, but it certainly restricts a lot of other interactions that they might want to do to try and make it a little bit more secure. Then there's the uh, mobile option as well. So can they do the quiz offline using a mobile app? So they can still do the quiz using a mobile app, but it's whether they're using it offline, meaning that they don't have any internet connection, which means you can't check things and you have to wait for it to upload later. It's up to you. That's just an option. Let's jump to the last one. Overall feedback. You may have noticed overall feedback way back here. Overall feedback. And this is overall to the whole quiz. Overall feedback means if they get 100%, this is the feedback that you'll give them. You can then set a grade boundary. So that could be um, 90 or 75 as a percentage. And then the message that they'll get if they get below 75. That just works its way through. You can add more feedback boundaries as well to decide what grades actually return that overall feedback. Obviously, if you don't need to use overall feedback, then you can just turn it off here as well. And you don't need to use it. And the last few things are common to all modules, so you will have seen these previously. So this is the available show on course page or hide from students. So it can be hidden from students potentially as well until you want it to be made available. There's a, a separate ID number. You can have groups or no groups as well, so you can separate them into groups. That's up to you. Uh, restrict access is the same as the normal restrict access. Um, which you should have looked at in a separate area. If you haven't, go and check out restricting access on common module settings. Uh, activity completion is the same, although we'll just have a quick look. Show activity as complete when conditions are met. The conditions for a quiz are student must view to complete, a student must receive a grade to complete, and if you do tick that, you then get the option of students must receive a passing grade uh, or all available attempts completed. So that means if there was multiple attempts and they're all being completed, that's fine. That class is a pass. Then you can also have a number of required attempts because you may want them to have a go a few times. Um, rare occasion where you would want that, but that's okay. And you can set an expected completion date for this, which means that if they've completed by that date, it's enabled, then the activity is classed as complete. And this is all to do with course completion. Last thing is tags, which we'll leave, and competencies. If you're using course competencies, then you can set that up in here. And that's all we have to do, save and display. And we have ourselves a new quiz ready to add some questions.